Hey guys, um, everybody ready to start? Okay, uh, so my name is Johnny. I'm a fourth year medical student. Um, this is my email here at the bottom. Feel free to email me uh, anything you have questions about. Um, so this was my step experience. Uh, I called it N equals one, just because this is kind of like my experience, but you definitely want to make sure that you ask other people um, what they did so you can uh, see what works best for you. Um, so definitely ask around. Um, so let's get started. So how I approach the exam, um, the two things that I think are most important is making a proper schedule and using the uh, proper resources. Uh, I'll go into detail into both of these, uh, but what do I mean by schedule? So you're gonna start studying about uh, January 4th is when your spring semester starts all the way to, uh, I would say, take the test at the end of May. So that's 20, 21 weeks. You should have a schedule for all 20 weeks of what you're gonna do. And by that I mean you make an Excel sheet of maybe uh, a 20 by seven block. So you know exactly what you're doing week three, Monday. You know exactly what you're doing week seven, Wednesday. Um, and that way you can plan. If you don't make a schedule, you can get really overwhelmed um, because uh, things tend to pile up. The resources there, there's you know numerous amount of resources. Um, so if you don't make uh, a schedule and you don't plan ahead, then uh, it can definitely, uh, definitely become difficult. And uh, the next thing is the resources. Um, so I think first aid and U World are the most high yield. Uh, it covers about 90, 95% of what you're gonna see on the test. Um, and the reality is you're not gonna memorize everything uh, in first aid or U World. Um, so my kind of thought process is why are you gonna split yourself into all these other things like BRS and um, Picmonic uh, and China and Golian and trying to memorize all of those when you can't even memorize uh, what I think is the most high yield. Um, so this is uh, just kind of like the outline of your spring semester. Uh, I break it down into two different phases. Uh, you have the review phase and the cram phase. Um, during the review phase, you want to get one pass of first aid. And uh, the review phase is during your uh, endocrine and um, your DHM module. Uh, so this is when you still have classes, you still have studying. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of time just to study for step. Um, so there you want to get one pass at first aid. The gram phase is, that's where you really go hard. Um, that's where you start UWorld. Um, that's where you want to get two passes of first aid. And um, that's where going to be the majority of your study time is. Um, so this is kind of during the review phase. This is how I broke it down. Um, it's 14 weeks. Each module is seven weeks, right? So during week one, I would do three days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, cardio. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday was pulmonary, um, all the way down, week two, week three. Um, you can really rearrange these um, how you like. The ones I would keep, though, um, is week four. Uh, that's when your endocrine midterm is, so you definitely want to cover like the endocrine portion of first aid, um, do the Kaplan questions, or the UCMLE RX, whichever one you choose. So that way you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Uh, same thing with week seven, you're covering reproductive, so you, that's the portion of first aid you want to cover, week 10 and week 14. Uh, but the other weeks you can kind of rearrange as you see fit, but definitely cover everything in first aid once. Um, week five, week six, I left microbiology. I give two weeks for that. Nobody likes to study for microbiology. That's a very, uh, very difficult section to go through. Uh, but it's, it, it's important. Um, I'm not going to say uh, it's high yield, what's not, uh, because people have different tests. So when people tell you, well, this, this topic is very high yield, um, it was high yield for them. So different people have different stuff that's more, more important. So you definitely want to cover everything, um, everything at least once. It's very easy to cover cardio. It's very easy to cover GI and renal. Uh, but biochemistry is a very difficult section. So you, you definitely want to split your time evenly. Um, does anybody have any questions, by the way? Feel free to interrupt at any point. Um, do you guys know what I'm referring to with this table? OK. So this is, uh, I broke down like the first week. Um, and you're going to have uh, 20 or 14 of these, right? Because it's uh, 14 weeks for the, uh, I guess, the quote unquote review phase. Um, so how did I do it? So Monday, um, I broke down, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was my cardio section. So I broke down the cardio uh, section of first aid into, um, I guess, embryology, anatomy, and physiology. That I did Monday in the morning. So you read about 10 or so, 10, 15 pages. Um, and afterwards, uh, you, can, you have a question bank that I would recommend you buy. I don't know if they provide you one. Um, but if, if they provide you with Kaplan, use that. If they don't, I would buy uh, Usimli RX. Uh, but basically, you do the reading in the morning, and then afterwards, you go to um, your question bank, and you select this, the main heading as cardio, and then the subheading as um, embryology, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. And so you cover the questions that you did, um, what you read over that morning. Does that make sense? 
Same thing, uh, Tuesday, you, Tuesday you read the pathology section in the cardio. Um, there I would recommend doing pathoma because pathoma, it's, uh, he kind of goes over, he explains it. Honestly, everything that he says in pathoma is in first aid. There was only one question I got that was in pathoma that I didn't see in first aid. It was some kind of aspirin-induced nasal polyp. But I mean, if you're really going to be searching for these one questions, I, I think it's just kind of a waste of time. Um, but path, use Pathoma if you like the way uh, that he explains things in his videos. And then um, as you're going through, take the notes um, that you're getting from these questions. So if there's something that you're seeing in the question bank that's not explained in first aid, or maybe that's explained better, um, or in a little bit more detail that you feel is useful, write that in your first aid so that um, as you're going through Kaplan, as you're going through Pathoma, um, as you're going through all these other resources, you're, you're kind of putting it all into one, one, uh, one resource that you can just kind of review. Um, so same thing, you do the cardiology patho uh, pathology section and then you do the, uh, the questions just on the pathology so it really solidifies it. Uh, Wednesday is farm. So farm is also one of those subjects that people tend to put off, well I think I can memorize it at the end and then you realize you know, it's two weeks before the exam and you haven't even looked at farm and that can get very, very overwhelming. Um, so I would leave a, a whole day just kind of to memorize the drugs and then do the questions on the drugs. Um, Thursday, you notice you, got, you guys still have POM2 responsibilities. You guys have responsibilities to going to your internal medicine, pediatrics clinic, psychiatry clinic, uh, whatever one, uh, or just you know life responsibilities in general. So that's why making a schedule is important because you know that this time is going to be blocked off. You know that this time you're not going to be able to study. Um, so that way you plan ahead. And um, you know I, I pushed off the uh, the anatomy and physiology in the afternoon, and you might have to stay up a little bit later or, or skip going to the gym just to finish up on the questions. Um, but basically, you read uh, a section of first aid, um, you know, uh, an isolated block, and then you do the questions afterwards. Um, sometimes it's, it's more or less biochemistry. I don't know, I think they have 100 or 150 questions. Uh, Microbio has 250 questions. Um, so you kind of have to plan, plan ahead for that, which is why I feel like making a schedule is very important. Does everybody make sense, make sense of what, I, uh, what I'm making here? Okay. Um, the cramp phase, this, this is where, where things get really, really tough because um, this is uh, once Gray's syndrome starts, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say this, but Gray's syndrome is, it's not really a useful class. You kind of go over stuff and it's very, it's slower. Um, I don't know, I, I, I kind of, I didn't really go to lecture. I just studied during the, I brought my scribes to the PBL lectures and uh, I read through scribes during PBL. That way it kind of makes it look like you're productive um, and not looking through first aid. But um, the, the cramp two phase, or the, the cramp phase, you're going to do two cycles of this. So this is three weeks. Um, so it's six weeks total after you start Gray syndromes. And basically your schedule is you're only doing UWorld and you're doing first aid. Um, so like Monday on the first day, you do one block in the morning. Say you get to school at 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. It takes you an hour to do a block. And you're doing a block of UWorld. This is mixed um, one hour, uh, what is it called, when you don't get the answer at the end. Um, time, yeah. Hmm? Sequester? Uh, I, I guess where, where it doesn't show you the answer, you're just clicking because you have to get into the into the mode. Like the ones you were doing um, during. Hmm? Yeah, time time okay, yeah. Um, the ones uh, you were doing in uh, EER and DHM, there set it so that you see the answer right after the question. So that way it kind of solidifies and you learn. Um, when you're starting to do UWorld questions, um, I would do them um, just timed random and where you don't see the answer, you see all the answers at the very end after you finish the hour. You need to get into the mode where you're able to click on an answer and without having, you know, without kind of like second guessing or thinking back and just moving on, just, you know, sticking with your gut feeling. Um, so you do one block in the morning, you take a lunch break and then this is uh, where it's kind of different because you do 30 content pages of first aid. Um, so the first section is behavioral uh, science where they give you all the, the math formulas. Um, that first page where it says be behavioral science, that, that doesn't count as a content page. The content pages start when it actually goes into material. And you count, you know, 30 pages, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, all the way to 30. The, the notes pages, that doesn't count. Uh, because I think you, uh, sorry, not you, will. first aid has 560 pages. Um, and I broke it down, which means you can cover it in 19 days with the last day being only 20 pages or so, which is like the rapid review. Uh, but that way, you're covering the exact amount of material um, every day. Um, it's really hard to say, well, I want to cover microbio this day and cardiology this day, because microbio is not, you can't cover that in one day. It's really hard. Uh, whereas cardiology, you, you probably could. So that's why I say break it down to 30 pages. Uh, it makes things even, and it breaks it up uh, very well. 
Um, as you can see, it's 19 days straight. It's, it's very tough. I did this for two cycles. I was going to do it for three, but uh, I burnt down at the end. But um, this, this mentally pushes you very, very hard. Um, so you do 19 days straight of this, and then at the very end, you take an MBME test. Um, when I took my CBSE, I think I made a 215, and then after three weeks, it jumped up to a 249. Um, because I did, I, I don't know how many questions this is, I think this is close to 16, 1700 questions in three weeks. Um, so it definitely, it definitely raises up your score. And that's why I say don't start U World now. Uh, don't start it in EER, don't start it in DHM, start it in Great Syndromes, uh, because you want to save those questions um, for, for this point. And uh, at the bottom here, I write on the first uh, cycle, so when you go through the first three weeks, highlight as you're going through uh, what you don't know. So for me, like on cardiology, like I knew the murmurs, like to me, I, I, you know, I don't really need to review that. I don't need to review the blood flow through the heart. Uh, but some of the other kind of more specific stuff, like uh, endocarditis and the Hayseck organisms, that I, I knew that I wasn't going to remember um, in three weeks. So those are highlighted. Highlight whatever you feel like you will not remember or um, what you feel is kind of like high yield. Um, so that way when you go through the second cycle, you're not, you only focus on the highlights. You're not focusing on all this other um, stuff that you already know because it's easy to study what you know. It's very hard to study what you don't know. So I don't know if you guys are highlighters or not, but um, it, it works for me. And then um, you're gonna finish your world around uh, the middle of your second cycle. Um, at that point, just do your marked and incorrect um, from there. Does this make sense? To everybody, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, speak up. I know there's only three weeks here, but this is six weeks. You do this twice. Um, so you're going to take two MBME tests. And people always ask which MBME tests to take. Um, I think just take the latest two, uh, 15 and 16, or whichever ones are out now. Um, they say seven is the most predictive, but I think it's because people take seven um, a couple days before their tests, and that's why it's most predictive. But um, I, I think they're all, they're all good. 15 and 16, I remember, were, were very similar styles to the actual test. Um, so, so when, when to take the test, um, honestly this may seem early, but I think if, you, if you're following the, the two cycle thing, um, you can take it at the end of May because you finish the second cycle, I think like uh, May 20th or something like that, and then it's uh, Memorial Day the following Monday. But the following week after you finish the second cycle, that's when you should take the test, which is the end of May. Um, I was originally, when I took the test, I was going to take it at the end of, or the middle of June. Uh, but after doing two cycles of this, 19 days straight, two blocks a day, 30 pages of first aid, like you burn out. And it's, it's really, really hard um, to keep going. Uh, I mean, some of you are going to want to see, well, if I get an extra third cycle in, I may do better. But honestly, if you burn out, like it's, you're, not helping, uh, you're not helping yourself. Um, I made like a 249 on the first uh, MBME, and then I made a 243, and then I made a 241. And um, like my scores were, were, were gradually declining. Honestly, I should have taken this thing. Uh, maybe at the beginning of May, I probably could have done better. Um, so that, that's why, I don't know, I've heard some of your classmates say that you should take it, you know, middle of June or at the very end, the day before you start clinical skills week. I, I don't think that's, uh, that's a good idea. But uh, it's, it's up to you. If you're, your MBME is on the second cycle, not where you want it to be, and I would say if, for emergency medicine purposes, if you're scoring below 220, um, then yeah, I would push it, you know, three weeks back. But if you're kind of like happy with your score and you're like, okay, this is, you know, where I want to be, I would just take, I would take it at the end of May and get it over with. You want to give yourself a vacation um, before you start clerkships. If you come into clerkships burnt out, then that can be very detrimental too. So um, I include this uh, DIT for a possible uh, third phase or third pass. Um, because, uh, like I said, it, if uh, on that second cycle you're not doing as well as you should on the MBMEs, um, you can buy it's seven or eight hundred dollars uh, for the DIT thing. Unless you get the videos, if you get the videos um, somewhere, then make sure you also get the PDF of the the workbook because um, DIT is not really effective with just the videos alone. You need the workbook with it to kind of like answer the the questions. DIT, what I think it's really good for, is um, it gives you like uh, it solidifies a lot of factoids. So he'll tell you something, and then you'll get tested on those factoids, and then you know um, the the next two three days you'll get tested on them again. So it really sticks. Um, and do the 15 day plan. Um, you don't want to do the the month or two month plan. It, it's it's too spread out. You really want to cover DIT like in a in a very condensed fashion. Um, so if you're not scoring where you want to be at the end of May or that on your second MBME, um, you can consider pushing your test back. But I would really talk to an advisor. Um, before you do that. Um, so the, the, the second to last slide I have here is uh, about the resources. Um, so during the review phase, uh, this is during EER and DHM, um, 
really you're going to be covered getting one pass of first aid and you're going to have a Q-Bank uh, with it. So like I said, I used Kaplan because that's what they provided us for free. Um, if I had to go back, I, you know, I could have probably recommended using Usemly RX. The reason is because uh, RX pulls up the first aid page after you, uh, you do the question. So um, it really helps solidify that because you'll see it in first aid. A lot of times when I was answering questions on my test, like I could visually picture the first aid page uh, with the answer on it um, because I've gone through it three or four times. Um, the other resource is uh, Pathoma. Um, I don't think you need the book. I think for that one you can just use the videos and uh, as you're going through the videos, have your first aid pulled up right next to it. Um, so that way you can see is, is that information that he's going over in Pathoma in first aid. If it's not, then write it in. Um, but like I said, I only got one question that I felt wasn't in, uh, wasn't in first aid that was in Pathoma. And then same thing into the, uh, with the question banks. You want to add in um, kind of like the information uh, extra so you have one comprehensive resource and you don't really need to be jumping uh, back and forth between se uh, separate resources. The cram phase, um, like I said, just first aid in UWorld. Um, this covers you know, a significant amount of the test. You're not really going to master these two materials. They're too, um, too high yield uh, or too dense in themselves. Um, I mean, People say, for well, first aid, and I wanted to cover Golian. And Golian is like 600 pages. 700, I think, is the latest edition. Um, there's no way you're going to get through that, and there's no way you're going to memorize all of that. Um, the high yield stuff is in first aid and U World. So that, that's what somebody told me when I was taking the test, because I was really nervous about splitting myself between all these uh, resources. Um, you know, what should I do when? But somebody told me just use first aid in U World, and I, I think it worked uh, well to my advantage. Um, if you can get a PDF copy of uh, UWorld, I mean not UWorld, of uh, First Aid, that would be really good. Um, I had two computers pulled up to the side, so one of them was UWorld, and when I was going through the answers, I would uh, control F, and I would try to find that topic in, uh, in First Aid, and because uh, there's, no, there's no index in, uh, in UWorld. So it makes things a lot faster. But um, also, I, I made this little star point. There's this 36-page uh, high-yield uh, document of Golian out there. Uh, you can get a free PDF of that. Um, it's good. It has like a lot of factoids and like previously used questions. The thing is, I think that article or that those notes are from like 2000 or 2003. It's it's very old. Um, I got one question on there that um, that I hadn't seen before and that I, I think I was able to answer correctly. But like I said, out of you know how many is it? Uh, 320 questions or it may be more. I'm not sure. Um, one question is neither here or there, and that might be a test question too that they're gonna uh, take out. So. Like, don't, don't try to spread yourself thin going to all these uh, extra resources when, I mean, they're, they're kind of low yield. Um, so my last slide is, uh, I'm just going to talk about my scores. I'm not, it's not here to brag, but um, sometimes you'll ask people how they studied. Um, but you kind of want to ask them, and this might be a direct question, you know, comfortable, be comfortable um, asking them this. But uh, like, well, how did you do in preclinical grades? Uh, how did you do on step one? How did you do beforehand? Because someone who's scoring all honors and you know they blasted a, a 38 on their MCAT, and um, you know they're they're making these stellar grades. They may study differently, or they may be a different student than you are. Um, this is not side note. I was on my away rotation. I asked this girl, well, how many programs did you apply to? How many places did you interview at? And, and where where did you rank, um, or where did you get in based on your rank? She's like, well, I applied to 25. I got interviewed at 25. I got interviews to 25 places. I went on 10, and I matched my first choice. And I was like, okay, well, clearly you're a different applicant than I am. Um, so I don't know if your advice is necessarily um, useful. But uh, SAT and MCAT, I didn't do that great. Um, and they say there's a correlation between these standardized exams. Um, so I was really nervous about that. Preclinical grades, I only had four high passes. Uh, the rest of them were, were passes. So I mean, I, I felt like, I guess, low, low average student. Um, step one, I was able to get a 239 on it though. Um, I had it for, for mid-June, but then I pushed it closer uh, to the beginning of June. Uh, honestly, I should have taken this thing mid-May. Um, I might have might have actually done better. But, um, and then uh, step two, I increased to 255. So you, you can, uh, there, there's a progression. And, you know, just because you're, if you're making all P's, it doesn't mean um, that you can't, uh, you can't do good. So that was, that was it, kind of making a schedule, sticking to resources. Um, does everybody, I think the schedule part is the most important. Does everybody understand like how to, how the schedule works and like how you're supposed to set it up? So you get one pass during EER and DHM and then you get two passes afterwards. Um, and then you take your test. So three total passes. Go ahead. So 
Oh no no I didn't uh, I didn't do the the, the third DIT thing. Um, I remember uh, I ran out of your world questions. Do, redoing questions that you missed is they're not they're nowhere near as effective because you've kind of already seen the question. You kind of have a it's it, it's not really good. Um, so that's why people say well I want to get through two two cycles of U world. I think doing them a second time is is a waste of time. Uh, you really want to do them just the first time and go over the ones you have marked are incorrect. Um, but no, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't use DIT. Um, any other questions? No. Okay. Well, you can go back like what things changed in our study plan or testing. Like I said, I would have used uh, RX instead of Kaplan, um, just because uh, the RX pulls up the the U world uh, page directly afterwards after you do the question. Um, I would have taken this thing earlier. Um, instead of taking it um, June 2nd, even then, like I, I was so burnt out that last week. Um, it's really hard to even focus or read. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, just pushing closer and, and doing RX. Did you study the group or study like, at home by yourself? No, I, I studied individually. I went to the gross anatomy lab, the second floor where they have all those computers. Nobody's there at that time. Um, and I just pulled two computers to myself and one computer I had UWorld and I was doing the questions and the other computer I had uh, the PDF of uh, first aid pulled up and that way if I ran into something on UWorld and I was kind of like well um, where is it in first aid because if it's like a you know cardiac bug is it in cardio section is it microbiome you're flipping through pages but if you just do control F you can like type it in and it'll just scan the whole file in like two seconds um, but no I studied by myself go ahead Um, summer one, I did the pediatric emergency medicine uh, clerkship, uh, or not the clerkship, just the elective. Um, this one was Austin. Um, it's good. If you want, you can do the um, the one here in Galveston. I think the faculty here are very cool. Uh, they let you do a lot of stuff. You don't have emergency medicine residents here, so um, and some of the internal guys or the other people on service, they don't really care to do the procedures. So you can definitely get to do a lot of stuff if the the faculty are you know if you're comfortable with them and they're comfortable with you. Um, but I took one month off. No, no, I did the, the first month I did the, uh, the PEDS EM, and then I took the next summer off, so. Any uh, research? I don't have any research on my application. Um, I didn't really get asked that on my interviews. I mean, it, if you have it, if you're interested, it's good, do it, but don't, I tell people don't try to force research just to kind of have that on your application.